Hi, we are in chapter eight. This is, uh, we're getting a little bit tougher here. This is, uh, we've done univariate distributions, uh, distributions with one variable. And uh, in chapter five, well, four, we learned general discrete. Five, we learned some special discrete distributions. Six, we learned general continuous distributions. Um, seven, we learned specific uh, popular continuous distributions, uniform exponential normal. In chapter eight, what we are doing now is, um, oh, I don't want that. Let's get a pen here. Chapter eight, we're going to look at bivariate distributions, um, distributions defined on two variables, two or more, but we're going to look at two variables. And so this is a, this is a, just an extension really of what we did in earlier chapters. We're going to look at discrete first. I think discrete, it's easier to see. And then when we get to continuous bivariate distributions, we're going to be uh, integrating over a, a, over a space. So we have double integrals. And uh, I, I think I'll probably make some whiteboard videos for that too, just so um, again, if you have forgotten how to do a double integral or how to set up the limits of integration, I think that's something that you, you might want to review or, or watch me do um, some whiteboard videos. So chapter eight, bivariate, there's our comic. Um, we, we are doing really well. We, we only have, I think we go eight, chapter eight, 11, a little bit of 10. So we're, we're in good shape. So eight one is called joint distributions of two random variables and we'll start discrete first so um, I actually hand wrote this I've not I've not typed it in yet so let let X and Y be discrete random variables and we're defining them on the same sample space and um, we're gonna say P of X Y is a joint probability mass function so in chapter 4 and 5 we had P of X was just some some distribution like uh, x over 15 we'll say for x equal 1 to up to 5 that should be valid I believe 3 and 4 7 3 and 4 seven. well I, I think this is valid right I but I, I should check so I shouldn't write that so x over 15 for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, I'm describing a discrete distribution because you can see I've put in the exact values. Um, if I look at 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 over 15, I'm just making sure I wrote a valid density or a valid mass function. This is 9, 12, 13, 9, 12, 15, so yay, um, this guy, what I was checking is making sure that P of X sums to 1 over its support, which it does. So, sorry, I'm a little bit off track now. So P of X, Y will be in two variables. So P of X, Y is the probability X is X and Y is Y. Um, so now I'm worrying about two conditions, and this is called the joint probability mass function. Sometimes I just call it the joint, and I always get myself in trouble, especially in the newspaper. The school newspaper I because I start talking freely about joints and uh, if you take it out of context it doesn't sound the best uh, this shouldn't be surprising the the fact for joint density function or mass functions is over the support of Y and the support of X where I'm 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 using this these symbols to denote support so if you look at all of your X's and Y's and sum over the space of X's and Y's this this joint mass function better sum to one um, to be valid. Uh, if you break apart the joint into its pieces, you get marginal mass functions. And this is a little bit hard, I think, for people to understand also. P of x of x, I'm going to put the random variable there to remind you which um, variable I'm talking about. That's the probability x is equal to x. And to find that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold um, Oh boy, I'm not saying this very well. I'm going to hold x constant, let x be x, and then I'm going to sum over the y's to get the probability x is x as I look across all the y's. So I'm summing x's over the y's. Um, so to get p of x, I'm really just taking my joint here, and I'm going to sum the joint over the y's. And I, I think it will. I'll, I'll be able to show you better an example. So p of y is just the joint summed over the x's, p of x is the joint summed over the y's, and uh, 
I've got to show you an example because this is this probably is not making sense. Um, so let's just do a nice example. This is from the textbook. Uh, here's a joint probability mass function, p of x, y, is defined by k times x over y for x equal 1, 2, y equals 1, 2. Otherwise, uh, the distribution is 0. I'm trying to find the value of k. So k has to take on a value such that when I sum over my x's and y's, this mass function sums to 1. So right now, I'm just putting in values. I'm making a little table here. When x is 1 and y is 1, this will just come out to be k. When x is um, when x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 1, this is just going to be 2k. x1, y2 is a half k, and 2, 2 is k. So when I sum over all my possibilities, which is 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, these are the values I get, which is 4.5k. In order then for this mass function to sum to 1, k is going to have to be 2 ninths. Okay, so right now I know p of x, y is 2 ninths x over y. And going to the next page, there is the joint mass function right here. So if you stick in, you know, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2 into this, it sums to 1. Now what I want to do is determine the marginals with respect to this joint. So to get p of x, um, perhaps easiest to see in this table down here, the probability x is equal to 1, I'm going to sum over my y's. I'm going to hold x equal 1 constant. I'm going to sum over my y's. So when x is 1, y can take on the value 1 and 2. So I'm just going to let x stand steady at 1. I'm going to put y in as 1, put y in as 2. So the probability x is 1 over either y would be 3 ninths. The probability x is 2, I sum over my y's again, and I get 6 ninths. To get probability y is 1, I'm going to sum over my x's. y is 2, sum over my x's. I think it makes very much sense in the table. Sometimes it's hard to see that's what I'm doing in my um, summation, and maybe why I'm doing it. But if you just have a general formula then, to get p of x, the marginal, I'm going to sum my joint mass over my y's. So that's exactly what I did in the table, but now I'm just doing it in the formula. So, um, and this time I'm not letting x be 1x, I'm just letting x stand still, and I'm going to sum my x, my p of x, y over my y's. So can you see in this formula here, I'm going to put in y equals 1, put y equals 2 in here, sum over this, and this is my function p of x in terms of x. If I'm looking for p of x, you should get a formula just with x's in it. If I'm looking for p of y, I should get a formula just with y's in it. And to get p of y, I'm going to sum my mass function over my x's. And so you can see uh, the general formula then, if I stick in x equals 1, I get 1 third, x equals 2, 2 thirds. This guy is a valid mass function on its own. This guy is a valid mass function on its own. And I'm just breaking the joint down to its pieces. I, I can't assume, you know, maybe you're just thinking, oh, I can just multiply or so. I can't assume independence. I don't know, you know, later we're going to have in, uh, I think it's 8.2 or 8.3, we'll talk about independence. But now I can answer you know, a lot of questions. What's the probability that x is bigger than 1 given y is equal to 1? Um, remember, this is just a conditional probability, a given b. So that's the probability that x is bigger than 1 and y is equal to 1 over y is equal to 1. For x to be bigger than 1, that means it only takes on the values 1 and 2. That's the probability x is 2, y is 1 over y equals 1. And this is just a ratio. It's 2 thirds. How do I find the expected value of x? If I already have the um, marginal, it's just p of x times x. Expected value of y, p of y times y. Um, and everything that you would think about later, we'll find also the expected value of like x times y. And I will need the uh, joint to be able to do that. Um, I guess I put another example here. Here is a um, probability, joint probability mass function defined for these x's and these y's. Um, what's the probability that x is bigger than y given this is your um, mass function? I'm going to make this really easy and not try to do something complicated. I mean, I can write a double sum, but I'm really looking at when x is bigger than y, that's 1, 0, 2, 0, 2, 1. 
And down here I can find P of X. Notice I'm summing over my Y's. I can find P of Y. I'm summing over my X's. I get a general formula with respect to X. I get a general formula with respect to Y. You can check these guys. He better be valid when I stick in 1, 2 and equal 1. He is. He better be valid when I pick in 0, 1. He is. Um, so here's another one. This is took me forever to figure out what a burrow was. I think a burrow's... I guess maybe like a donkey or so. At first I was like, burrow, hmm, what is burrow? I just kept thinking of burritos and Taco Bell and, uh, um, you know, Bel Grande. Uh, I know. My mom loves Taco Bell, so always when she visits, we have to go there at least once. Um, this kind of, uh, anyway, Steve, Steve stole, stole some animals out on this uh, ranch, we'll say. But this should look very familiar to you, this kind of distribution where so many in this category, so many, so many. Um, we did this in one variable from chapter five. I'm hoping you're thinking the right word. I could pause and put a little quiz in here. Um, can you say it starts with an H? Yes, this is your hypergeometric. It looks very much, right? Except in two variables. And it shouldn't be surprising to you when I get the mass function in terms of X and the mass function in terms of Y, these are actually hypergeometrics. P of X is hypergeometric, so is P of Y. Um, also, law of unconscious statistician still holds. Um, so I went through discrete first just because you have a you know either a finite number of points or a countable function. I think it's easier again to see probabilities. What's the probability X Y is equal to you know a given value? When we start doing continuous. You kind of lose that nice discrete nature and uh, the probability of of a random variable given different inputs. You know, you start integrating over a region, and I think it, even though it makes sense, it's still a probability. It's a little bit harder to see, so that's why we're starting with discrete. So anyway, this is eight one joint mass functions. Uh, at some point in my life, I have to figure out why this does it and stop it. Um, otherwise, I'll, I'll talk to you later. I'll go to continuous next. And I'm going to turn this off. Okay, talk to you soon.